Welcome back to my channel, my name is Vera and in today's video I'm going to be setting up my travel journal for my three month long trip to Mauritius. Alrighty, let's get started. Now the journal I'm using for my travel journal is just my bullet journal from this last quarter of the year. I had extra pages and I wanted to use them so I figured I would be bringing this journal with me so why not use it as a travel journal. I am going to be recreating somebody else's theme, it's the video linked in the card and it's basically using the stamps in your passport as decorative elements on your page. These are my passports, this one's an old one and I'm going to just copy them onto my page. I'm going to use the same technique that this creator used and first of all I'm going to trace out the stamps just so that I have the right dimensions for them and then I'm going to cut them out so that I can properly use them. I'm going to use a white pencil to kind of like color the back and then trace it on the front and then it will have a white mark on my page. Now you'll see that I already have some shapes on my journal because I was just kind of doodling this around but I'm going to redo all of these because they're not all the right shape even if most of them are and then I'm just going to redo them. I have my passport on the side at all times just so that I can recreate the stamp to its you know relative exactness and I'm going to do that by using the acrylographs I have on the side. I've got four different colors this month or not this month for my travel journal I should say. They're various greens and yellows and I think they look really really cool. Now if you've watched a couple of my videos or you've been following me on Instagram you'll know that at the end of the year well at the end of November I'm going to Mauritius for three months with my family to celebrate my grandma's 100th birthday. Hence why the first stamp that I'm going to be recreating is a Mauritian stamp. I'm going to recreate every single stamp I have kind of multiple times. I'm using random numbers and random dates so all of them are fake dates or well, not fake dates but they've all been changed in some way shape or form so just to bear in mind I guess and the next one is a departed Australia stamp we then have Taiwan as well I'm going to go over a couple of the stamps just to give you an idea of like what are the countries that I've been to in the world and it's really really nice to see stamps I love collecting stamps on my passport so much so that when I was leaving my own country back when we had stamps I would ask them to give me a stamp on my passport because I just wanted to have the stamp but anyway so a couple of countries that I have been to so we've got Taiwan here and I'm just drawing the entry and exit stamps for Taiwan. I did go on exchange there during my university years and I had so much fun there. It's definitely one of my favorite countries in the world. It's so friendly. The food is amazing. Traveling there, it's so safe. Hitchhiking is safe. Solo traveling is safe. It's amazing. Love Taiwan. Like, it's beautiful. I'm going to just kind of alternate the colors next to each other so they don't all clump together and I freaking love how this turns out. The next stamp I'm going to be doing is my Malaysia immigration stamp and that one looks really cool. I love seeing the different shapes that different countries have for their stamps. Like Malaysia has an exit stamp that's in a triangle, other countries are usually pretty stock standard with rectangles and then some have circles which is really nice. And ovals, that's another one I have. Anyway, let's continue on. The Chilean stamp is probably my favorite, also the Peruvian one. And the reason why I really love the Chilean one is because it's actually two colors. Like when you stamp it on the passport it's blue and red and I think that's really freaking cool. So for the Chilean stamp I just have the entrance and the exit stamp and yeah that's that one. The next one I have is the leaving Portugal stamp. So the stamp for Portugal and any country in Europe are all the same and you just have the P for Portugal. There's a little plane as well and then you have an arrow and then you have which city you left. You'll also see the Peruvian one. Peru has like their official country logo. It's so cool and I love that stamp a lot. Next up I'm just going to write Mauritius and travel journal because this is a Mauritius travel journal. I wanted to keep it pretty easy because I'm putting a lot of effort into the stamps and also copying that same idea from this other creator who did stamps and also kept it a very minimal font which I thought was a very nice idea. Next up I'm going to do calendars into the journal and I'm going to have four months so November to February. I started with a yellow calendar but I ended up not liking it so I'm just going to go over it with a white pen and then I'm going to have my decorative stamps in the colors that I want so each of the calendars are actually going to be white. I'm just going to quickly show you what it looks like to do these stamps yet again. Some of these are sped up some of them aren't and here are just some more countries that I've visited or not visited but like entered to get somewhere else. For example this one is the Finnish stamp so I entered through Helsinki. This was to get to France for a uni semester and I just happened to have a flight that would enter 
Europe in Helsinki. Next one is for Vietnam. Now I went to travel in Vietnam at some point and I went for a couple of days. It's a pretty embarrassing story. I didn't realize that as an Australian, I needed a visa to get into that country. That is very embarrassing. So please always look up the countries you're going to and never assume that you can get a visa upon arrival because you can't. So I had to get an express visa to get into Vietnam and I had to pay like hundreds of dollars just to do that. So please pay attention and don't be stupid like me. That was probably the biggest travel mistake I've ever made and not one that I like repeating and not one that I'm proud of. I am very embarrassed to say that I did that. Enough exposing myself, let's keep moving on. The next country stamp that I'm going to be doing is the Philippines. The Philippines is an amazing country slash group of islands. Everyone in the Philippines is so friendly. Everything you do there is so much fun. Diving is amazing in the Philippines, of course, in El Nido, which is very famous for diving. Then you have Moabuel, which is the sardine run. So you can go scuba diving underneath all of these sardines and it's amazing. You can go snorkeling and see them from the top. Just a bloody brilliant country. The next country that I have stamps for is Argentina. And then I'm just going to write the dates that I entered and exited. So you have Entrada and you have Salida. Then I'm just kind of going to repeat a couple of stamps because, you know, I haven't traveled to all the countries in the world. So I'm not going to have access to all of their stamps. I'm going to have access to the countries that I visited. So I'm just going to be reusing them quite a few times. That being said, the next stamp that I do have is from Bangkok or Thailand, sorry. And I just have the entrance and exit one for that one. And it's a triangle and a rectangle. Also, you'll see that for some of the borders, I'm just kind of scribbling on some random markings. And they're actually supposed to be numbers, but you know what? I'm not going to pay attention. I'm not going to write out random numbers. So it's just going to be random squiggly lines. Next, I'm going to have my to-do list there because November is the month that I'm leaving. So I'm going to have a lot more things to do leading up to our departure date. And so I'm just going to have to do. On the subsequent months, I'm going to have a notes section, no to-do list because I'll be on holidays. Anyway, I'm just going to kind of show you the process of putting stamps. I'm not going to detail all of them. You'll just watch them appear as they go on. Some of these stamps are exactly the same and they're really fun to do. I had so much fun recreating all of this. I feel like I should explain my layouts a bit more. I've had a couple of travel journals previously that were integrated into bullet journals and the best layout I found was to have back-to-back -back calendars so that you could visually plan out your trips one after the other. I found that having a monthly log and then weekly spreads was inefficient for traveling, hence why I'm going for this layout. For this page, it's going to be my important information page and I'm really going to have insurance information, flight information, emergency contact information, although that shouldn't necessarily be needed on this page because I will have my phone with me. On the next page, I am going to have a budget page and the budget is not really anything that I'll be working out beforehand. I'll have an allocated budget, obviously. I have allocated $5,000 Australian dollars to this trip for three months, but I haven't exactly determined how it's going to work for me because I am staying with my family. So I'm not paying for accommodation for most of the time. And I also have to work out what activities I'm going to be doing whilst I'm there because I do want to get my dive master certification, which should take about a month or so to do, if not two months, if I want to do some sort of dive internship. So I have to work out these things. And then on top of that, any extra activities that I want to do, I'm going to have to buy food whilst I'm there and just like a lot of family activities. So I'm just not entirely sure what I'll be spending my money on. So I haven't really allocated budgets to specific categories. Next page is my packing list. Now for my packing list, I'm going to be working out what I need to take with me off camera and then I'm going to write them down. But I have specific things that I need to take with me that are not your average things that you take whilst you're traveling. Because I am filming YouTube videos and I have to create content whilst I'm away, I am taking a lot of art supplies as well as the fact that I am a brand ambassador. So I do have to promote their products and create content for them as well. So I have to take lots of things that you wouldn't necessarily take with you. So for example, things that I would be bringing that are not necessarily in relation to travel would be, for example, my laptop, my iPad, those two things. If I was traveling seriously, I would either bring one or the other, not both. And also because I have a very capable phone, I would actually maybe not even think about bringing my laptop or my iPad if I was traveling for less time or if I was actually traveling without filming. The other thing would be my SSD card and my external memory. I wouldn't bring those with me on a normal travel occasion, but because I'm filming, I have to bring them. Same goes for the USB hub. Then we have bags. So the bags that I'm bringing are my bum bag, which is generally the bag that I use whilst I'm traveling. So like on the airplane, it's just a small little bag that 
kind of goes cross shoulder. It's secure on my person. I'm not gonna lose it. It's hard to steal because I wear a jacket over the top. I'm also going to have a backpack. So this is also cabin luggage, suitcase obviously. And something that I haven't been bringing, but that's something that I've been missing out on is a waterproof bag. Next up, we have all of my art stuff. And I have the goal that whilst I'm overseas for three months, I wanna paint for fun and I wanna paint little artworks in a watercolor journal. So I'm bringing a watercolor journal and some watercolor with me and I'm going to try and paint. I will do a flip through of that one if I actually fill it out, which I hope I will. Otherwise it's a waste of space. Next we have my accessories. So everything from like hair ties to clips, to earrings, to sunglasses, to perfume. Then we have makeup. So just a few things that I use for my videos. Actually, I wouldn't really bring makeup with me traveling. Only thing I would bring is probably just like a small eyeshadow palette and eyeliner and then maybe one lipstick. The other thing that I would like to mention is that because I will be having kind of like a home base whilst I'm there, I do have the option to leave things in one area, come back to them. So that's another reason why I have more things to bring. Next up is other things. So I have goggles and my swim cap because I swim every day and I'm just, I need to be able to swim. And then things for scuba diving as well. I'm not going to fill out my clothing packing list because I think that one's really difficult to judge. And I generally kind of just <laughs> decide a day before I leave what I'm bringing with me. I already have a general idea of what I'm bringing and because it's a tropical island, I am bringing majoritarily summer clothing or you know white clothing so that's going to be easier to pack later on let's now move on to the next page and the next page that i'm going to be doing is my things to do in mauritius page now first of all i am going to be drawing my little stamps of course and i'm going to be tracing out the map of mauritius now i like to do this for most of the countries that i visit or if it's not a country but a region i will do the whole region and usually i will color code it and then color it out as i visited each of the areas however mauritius is an island and it is very small so i feel like that's not going to be a good idea so i'm just going to have the map and i'm going to put on my map the things that I end up visiting or the places that I end up seeing. There are two cities that I'm just going to mark out first and those are Port-Louis and Vacua and Port-Louis is the capital of Mauritius and Vacua is where most of my family is and probably where I will be staying or spending the majority of my time in so just to have it on the map. Also to do this by the way how I got this map onto the page is I traced it off of my computer. Now I would not recommend doing this on your computer screen because your computer screen is fragile and you don't want to be using any sharp objects to trace things out. However, I used a very light hand, I want to say. Like, it's not something that I would recommend. However, I do it a lot. So, you know, take what you will from that information. Next up, I'm going to just write the things to do. Now, I just kind of went on to TripAdvisor for this one and just wrote things to do and Mauritius. So if you are planning any trips anywhere and you just kind of want to do something like that, I would recommend just going to TripAdvisor and write things to do. Now, I am kind of a type A personality when it comes to planning, but that was me previously. More recently, I have allowed myself to kind of let go of the planning process and be more spontaneous. And I think that having a solid plan, like knowing what you actually want to see, but then kind of letting yourself explore other things if they pop up is a really great way to explore a country because then you see everything that you want to see, but you also give yourself the option to see things that you wouldn't have thought about. I don't know if I explained myself very well, but basically just not planning out my trip minute to minute which is something that I used to do. Anyway, so a couple of the things that I want to do in Mauritius or that I've read about very briefly are as follows. So we have the Black River Gorges, Mountains of Chamarel, plus the waterfalls, Le Mont Brabant, Grand Bassin, Le Pousse, Chamarel, the Seven Coloured Earth Geopark, Troubiche, Les Sept Cascades. Cascade means waterfall in French. Now a fun fact is that I speak French. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that in one of my videos, but I do speak French. Yeah, anyway, that was a side note. It's not that important. <laughs> I am curious though. I would like to do a bullet journal setup in French one day, but I'm not sure if anyone would actually be interested in watching that. So let me know down in the comments again if that would be something that you would find entertaining at all. So I'm very happy to be doing this video because I do want to kind of show people a little bit about my personal background and where I'm from, or not where I'm from, but where my family is from. And it's nice to be able to educate others on a topic that feels a little bit more unique and definitely more personal because Mauritius is where my family is from. Now, just a little bit of a geographical and history lesson. Mauritius is a tiny tropical island off the southeast coast of the African continent, east of Madagascar. The country is about the size of Rhode Island in the United States, according to my very accurate source, 
Wikipedia. Only 3% of the Mauritian population is of Chinese ethnicity, so most Chinese Mauritians abroad know other family names by last name. I'm kind of speaking out of my personal experience on that one. Mauritius is an ex-French colony, which explains why Mauritians speak Creole. And Creole is the, would you say, a French dialect? It has similarities to the French language, but it is rooted from the 17th and 18th century French, meaning that modern French won't necessarily help you understand Creole. I also decided to write the the country Mauritius down the bottom. Now this is not for me personally but it's rather for my Instagram because I do intend on taking a picture of this page and posting it to Instagram and I feel like people may ask what country I have traced out and they won't necessarily know that it's Mauritius. So I'm just gonna write Mauritius there so that people know what it is and I don't have to explain it to anybody. I actually did a poll on my Instagram stories the other day and I wanted to know if people actually knew where Mauritius was. Not a lot of people knew where it was or even knew that it was a place that existed on planet Earth. The next page that I'm going to be doing now is my stories page. Now this is actually kind of like a travel journal where you enter in the dates and the things that you did. I leave it blank and I've got about several different pages where I can fill the pages up with stories and the reason I have this much space and the reason why I write stories is because I don't want to write every single day. I would rather write about something that's happened or something that's exciting that's happened. I also like to write about people that I've met from for example, people who have touched me whilst I'm traveling, who are very special people that I meet that I probably won't meet ever again, but that have had an impact in my life. So I want to have a space in this travel journal to write about these encounters and these things that I do. Another thing that I want to write about in terms of stories is things that are really, really spontaneous and things that I did not plan. So for example, in Portugal, I went traveling to the Azores Islands for a month or so, and I did a lot of hitchhiking, which is not exactly something that I would be comfortable doing any anywhere else in the world except for Taiwan and hitchhiking was so interesting and I have so many beautiful stories from when I was hitchhiking so that's why I want to have this space to look back on in the future. In this story section as well I will be sticking in ticket stubs, any nice places that I visit, little maps, little brochures, photos etc and it will just kind of become this kind of scrapbook collection at the back of the journal and I think it's really nice to be able to record all of these details and it's even cooler to be able able to do it on black paper because typically you would do something like this on white paper. So I am really interested to see how this spread actually turns out and I invite you to come and watch my travel journal flip through when I've completed it. I think I will post that around March sometime next year because that's when I'll be back from Mauritius and when I will have completed this journal about Mauritius. Another thing I should mention is that a typical travel journal would have space to write things in chronological order. I've expressly chosen not to do that because of the reasons I mentioned previously previously, but another reason is because I have a five-year memory journal where I log the things I do on a daily basis and I feel that it would be redundant to have that in this travel journal. I want this travel journal to be for writing out more details because the memory journal doesn't really offer you much space if you want to write extensively about an event after that happened. It only gives you a very small space on a page. The last spread that I'm going to be doing in this journal is going to be my review page. Now I have a review page for pretty much every single thing that I do in my life because I find it really interesting to reflect on how everything went and areas that I can improve. So on this review page, I am going to have different elements and I'm going to be able to track them and write them down in the future after the fact. First thing that I want to have a look at is, for example, my favorite memory. Out of the three months that I am in Mauritius, I would like to figure out what was my absolute favorite memory from the entire trip. I leave about, you know, a couple of lines to be able to write about that memory. We then have memorable highlights. I also leave space for writing in my least favorite moment because you're not always going to have a beautiful time 100% of the time. There's always going to be something that makes you uncomfortable, that makes you sad, and I just want to be able to know what it is and, you know, what happened. Next part is I want to have a budget estimated. So that one's obviously $5,000 and I want to have a budget spent. So that's to know how much I overspent or how much I underspent. So if I budgeted my trip really well or if I didn't budget it well at all. I think this is definitely going to be a very interesting one. So again, if you want to see how I filled all of this out, I will detail that in a video when I'm back from my trip. So in a couple of months time. The next part that I want to write down is what I learned about myself 
myself. Now this is not a lot of space to write this down but I have other sections on the next pages but what I learned about myself so you know am I impatient? Am I selfish? Am I caring? What kind of person am I when I'm traveling? I find that it varies from country to country which is interesting. I also want to write how I changed so at the beginning of the trip you know I'm going to be a specific kind of way and I also just want to be able to you know figure out how I change over the trip. Like do I become more selfless? Am I more relaxed after it? Am I more stressed? Was this a good trip where I grew positively or did I go backwards in terms of mentality or any changes in that kind of sense? The next part that I want to write down is what I learned about the world. I generally meet amazing people when I'm traveling that have beautiful life stories and people specialize in very different sectors and areas that I don't know anything about. So I like to have a section where I say what I learned about the world or what I learned about a specific sector so that I can write it down. The last part that I usually like to include is what I can improve. So general comments to me about my personality or my outlook on life really affect me during a trip and sometimes people repeat the same things to me. So it's something that I either dislike about myself or feel I want to change and that I could do better in. Finally, let's have a flip through of this entire travel journal before the pen. I'm going to have my cover page here. We have my November spreads. You've already seen me start to fill in the to-do list here with some events including my 100th birthday celebration for my grandma. We have December with some dates in there as well. January with some dates again. February with my departure date on the 28th of February and the notes on the side. I've already filled out some of the important information so my travel dates, the times and the dates. We have my packing list which I filled out earlier or well at least not the clothes part. We have the things to do page in Mauritius obviously and then we have several pages for stories and I've filled in some stamps on every single page. You can see that I get tired of doing this because there are less and less stamps as the pages go on, which is quite funny in my opinion. And on that page, I've left it blank altogether. My last page is my review page, and that is the end of my travel journal. So again, come back in March next year to see how this one turns out, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Now I understand a black bullet journal is not necessarily the most practical thing for traveling, so if you want to find more tips and tricks for a travel journal in an A5 bullet journal with white pages, you can check out this video next.